with Tracy in LA. Hi everyone, welcome back to my podcast, Dance Journey. Today we have my friend Barry, Barry Grossman, and she is my friend from ballet. We met in ballet. We don't really know how. I mean, we met at the bar, but we like met. in the ballet bar, not the bar We bar. met at the bar. We met at the bar. <laughs> I was like, we were having a drink. Um, yeah, I think we just stand in a similar section. Yeah. And we, and just, we like always arrive around the same time. Yeah. And I talk to anyone who will talk back to me. So yeah, one of us started talking. And here we are. We started chatting in class and then we must have exchanged numbers at some point because I feel like the when I first started getting to know you better was when you were like, oh, Tracy, I just I saw your video on Instagram or you saw like one of my dance videos from another class and you yeah. said something nice to me about oh. it. And I was They're like, so cool. oh, because like I wasn't on Instagram officially. Um, I could like look on Instagram, but I hadn't like ever posted anything. So I was like, oh, that was nice. And then I remember talking to you about like, I'm thinking about getting on Instagram. And now you have a podcast. <laughs> and now I'm like a crazy Instagram person. But Barry kind of inspired me with her social media because she's like so Thanks. funny. And I always like loved looking at all Thank your you. stuff on Instagram and TikTok. So I feel like we kind of got to know each other yeah. talking that way more just like through social media or texting and stuff. But then, mm -hmm. of course, in class. So. That's kind of how we met, however many months ago that was, or a year, or who, at least a year. Has it been a year? Time yeah, is flying. So <laughs> I've been taking Chasen's class for like two years. Wow. I've been back in ballet for maybe two and a half now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's probably been, we've probably known each other at least a year. Yeah, I think so. Um, crazy. So, yeah. So before we get into like your kind of history with dance, what does your dance life look right like right now? Like what is what's your schedule like? Yeah. Well, it's about to change in a very intense way. But um, oh. for the past like, I don't know, as long as I can remember, I've been doing class Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday morning and Monday night. But we have the showcase coming up and I signed up to be in three pieces, which is very ambitious. Wow. They each rehearse two hours a week. So I'm going to be in rehearsal Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So I'm thinking that will now mean I'll be dancing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, my gosh. So Wednesday and Thursday would be my only days off. And I don't know if that's sustainable. <laughs> you have a full-time job. I do have a very <laughs> full-time job, and I need to be in the office for it. Yeah. Three days Every day? Week. Oh, three days. Still, that's a lot. Um, that's a lot these days. Yeah, so currently, like, my in-office days happen to be my off-ballet days. Okay, that's kind of good, I Except guess. Except for today. Okay. <laughs> um, and who's... So this is the West Side School of Ballet in Santa Monica, where we are right now. Yeah. We're actually... I forgot to mention, we're actually about to take Chasen's Greenwood's um, Intermediate, Intermediate Slash Advanced. Is that what it's called? That's what it's called, but the thing I say about Chasen is he only has two speeds, hard and harder, and this one <laughs> is harder. <laughs> So I that's a pretty go. that's a pretty good description. So this is his Wednesday night ballet class. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna be so West Side School of Ballet has an adult showcase they put on. Well, they've been putting it on every year with last mm -hmm. year. I think they skipped a few years with the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, last year was my first year doing it. Okay. Um. So yeah. So this is your second year doing it. And mm -hmm. whose pieces are you in? So I'm going to be in Chasen's, of course. Um, I'm obsessed with him. His you can leave that piece in. was amazing last year. I love I working it. with him. Um, I'm going to be in Miss Liz. So she is the beginner point teacher. And um, I've been telling her for like the whole past year, like I'm going to be ready to be on point on stage next summer. So oh my gosh. Here we go. Let's see if That's I can do it. That's why you're working so hard. Because you're yeah. actually going to do point in that one. I'm going to do point. Wow. And um, then so I'm going to cool. be in Danny's because her piece was so beautiful last year. When I saw it on stage, I was like... I'm so jealous I'm not in that. Which one was hers? It was um, Fibonacci. It had all the colors and just like so many beautiful formations. Mm, I'm it trying was, to remember it, but. It was so pretty. It was lovely. And I, she's great, so. I can't believe you're going to be in three pieces. Are you also I having know. to practice on your own at home? I mean, yes and no. Like I, what I did last year is I didn't full out practice because I don't really have the space or the energy or the time for that. But like I would review a lot of choreography. So a lot of like marking it or watching it or going over it in my head okay. to make sure I knew it. I am concerned about memorizing three dances. Yeah. I know I can do it. I have done it in the past, but we'll see what happens. And last year you were in? Last year I was in two and okay. neither of them were on point. 
And last year was James and Jason's. Yes. Is James, um, James Addy, is that how you say his last name? I think so. Um, is he doing one this year? He's not doing one oh, this year. Okay, okay. I think he like wants to like have a summer and go on vacations and stuff. And what is that? <laughs> <laughs> vacation? Dancers do not get rest. No, I won't oh. be taking vacation from May to August. So. <laughs> um, well, the show is in August. The show is August Do you know the date? Oh, August 3rd. August 3rd. Right after my birthday. I think this year it is going to be two hours with an intermission. So. Okay. What was it last year? Only one. No intermission. Oh, the whole thing. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, okay, so before before we get more into that. Sure. What? Okay, I'm excited because I don't actually know, like, your whole story. So what? When did you start dancing in your life? I started dancing when I was about five or six. So okay. So in first grade, um... I had, like, been begging my mom to do it for the longest time, and finally she was like, okay. Um, and my dance school was right next to my elementary school, and my mom worked late, so my ballet teacher would come pick me up, like, on foot from elementary school and walk me over to the dance Aww. school and, like, help me do my bun, and then my mom would pick me up afterwards. And that was, you grew up in L.A.? In New Jersey. Oh, okay. I knew you lived there, but I didn't remember if you grew, yep. oh, so you grew up Jersey. there. Mm-hmm. So there's probably a lot of good dance studios in New Jersey, I imagine. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I went to one for a few years when I was little, and then it, it was fine, but it wasn't, like, the most competitive. Okay. So I made my mom switch me to the most, like, hardcore competitive one in town. <laughs> when you were, like, eight or something? Like, <laughs> no, mm, I'm, it was middle okay. school when I switched schools and I remember the first class at the new school and being so intimidated and I was Mm. also with girls a year or two older than me so it was like I had just gotten into middle school these are girls I saw around middle school and I'm at a new ballet school I was like so nervous just so silly oh my god they're just people (laughs) did you like did you get past that pretty quickly yeah yeah I had friends in no time like I remember feeling so nervous and then I remember everything being fine and I don't remember anything in the middle (laughs) okay so what was that like now was this all ballet it was all ballet okay I've pretty much only ever done ballet um my mom was always trying to get me to try something more fun she was like don't you want to do tap you want to do jazz (laughs) you want to do hip-hop but it has always been ballet for me it's like all I've ever wanted I took one hip hop class one time. I hated it. I was terrible <laughs> at it. It was, um, I had to rest my ankles so I couldn't be on point for a year. So I tried hip hop instead. And like, it is let me tell you, not a replacement for point. Well, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, I feel like maybe you should have tried a different style that was more like contemporary or jazz first. <laughs> I wanted a challenge. You're like, I'm going to go to the most extreme different thing, even though I love that. And the first thing the teacher said to me, he, he said, everyone line up. And just stand there, like, stand there relaxed. I didn't know how you to were be like... relaxed. At that point, I'd had, like, over a decade of ballet training. And he comes up to me, and he's like, how long have you been doing ballet? I'm like, 12 years, maybe? He's like, you're going to be a tough one to crack. <laughs> and he was right. And he never cracked me. I was never good. Well, did you only take it one time? I took it go- one time, and I recently rewatched the recital, and it's... Wait, you had a hip hop recital. Oh yeah, oh, you I took performed. it one time. Like you took, I took like it for a like a session whole of it. Year, yeah, oh. or like a whole like yeah. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, I would love to see that video. You're not gonna. <laughs> That's it's so also funny. it's crazy to watch the difference. Like the same year, I performed in ballet, and the entire hip hop number, I am looking at the ground. I don't know if I'm looking at my feet. I don't know what is happening, but like when I perform ballet, it's like. I could not be more happy. I could not be, like, looking higher up, like, looking at the audience. And then it's, like, an entirely different person was in that second piece. I'm like, that is not the same dancer. (laughs) Well, I'm definitely like that when I'm trying to dance and I'm nervous or I don't like it or I don't know what I'm doing. I definitely tend to just, like, I can't believe I I did tell myself to look up. I'm excited that you danced on stage. So you did all this dance. Wait, why did you say you had to take a break? Something happened with your ankle? Well, so I thought I had ankle problems, but knowing what I know now, I think I just was not being fitted properly for the correct point shoes. I think if I had been put in the right shoes, I don't know if I would have had to take a break. Okay. Which is a huge bummer, but... And you started on point at what age? I started on point when I was 13. I was on point from 13 to 17. Okay. And then, like, towards the end, like, the second half of my senior year of 
high school, I was off point and taking hip hop because you have your ankle. Because and ankles. is 13 a pretty average age for people taking ballet to start point or do people start younger or? I think so. I've heard of some people starting younger, but they have to be like incredibly strong. Okay. Because um, you have to develop all I the muscles. I think 13 seems pretty normal, but it also depends on how long you've been dancing. Like if you just started at 13, you're not. Right going to get up on point, but we had to, there was like some sort of assessment we had to do to make sure we were strong enough, like certain skills we had to be able to do. Okay. And this, and this whole time up through you, till you were 17, you were always in New Jersey still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you just like did all the training. How much were you training? Like every day? As much as my mom would pay for. Wow. Yeah. So not as much as I wanted to, not as much as some of the other girls, not as much as the girls who actually like ended up getting to pursue it mm -hmm. but um I think I was doing it like probably around three days a week okay I would guess I remember at one point my point class started being on Friday nights and I chose to continue to take it like chose it over my social life and Friday nights were the nights all my friends would always go to the movies at the mall uh -huh. so there's like this whole period from like early high school of movies that I either saw recently <laughs> or have never seen because they went to go see it without me and I was in ballet that's really funny do you have any examples of movies yeah like super troopers I've never seen the whole oh, thing funny you know what actually I don't think I have either but <laughs> it's like that era of that's movies funny. that like yeah that timeline you're like sorry never I was doing ballet Yep. Um, and you, through that whole time, you never got sick of it. You loved it no. that whole time. I've never gotten sick of it. Wow. That's amazing. I, I mean, I wanted to pursue it professionally. Yeah. And it was very heartbreaking when I found out that wasn't going to happen for me. How did you find that out? Um, so it kind of came time to start thinking about college, thinking about if auditioning was going to be happening and my teacher and my mom sat me down and were essentially honest and told me you know we know this is all you want to do you work really hard and we can see that but at the end of the day there are factors outside of all of our control that go into this and it's not gonna happen for you oh my god they gosh. said it much gentler it uh. was you know, it was the best they could have done, yeah. but the reality is they were right, and yeah. it would have messed me up in a lot of ways okay. had I tried to pursue it. Yeah. I've always been a curvier person. Mm -hmm. I fully had accepted at one point the fact that if I wanted to pursue dance professionally, I would probably have to get a breast reduction, and I wow. was willing to do that. Wow. And the reality is I wouldn't have made it even if I did do that, so I'm glad I'm glad that I was stopped before I started to take extreme measures like that or, you know, unhealthy body yeah. stuff because, like, the way my structure is, I just am not the ideal body type. Yeah. And it would take a lot for me to become the ideal body wow. type. Wow. Is that, was that literally the only reason they were giving you? It um, wasn't like. It's not, no, it wasn't just my body. It was also my technique. Yeah. You know, I wasn't. You didn't have as much I wasn't as strong much enough that people were going to take a chance on me. Okay. There, I wasn't that good. Yeah. Which sucks. Dang. It's that's still hard. hard. It was heartbreaking. And so I stepped away from ballet from when I was 18 to about 34. Because you I, just completely stopped just because like, I couldn't do couldn't it as have a hobby. A career. Okay. I couldn't. At that time, it was so heartbreaking for me. I couldn't think about ballet. I couldn't watch ballet. I couldn't talk to people who did oh, ballet. Man. I guess I am actually getting a little emotional. Aww. I didn't realize. Well, that's really rough. We got tissues here and we might yeah, need them. Yeah, we might need them. Um, that's sad, Barry. But yeah, it just, it took a really long time for me to come to terms with that and to come back around to the idea of loving it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's still something I struggle with. I mm -hmm. still have that like almost addictive personality towards ballet yeah. where it's, all I want to do and so many times in the past two and a half years I've had to slow myself down and be like this is supposed to be fun that's why you're doing it this isn't your whole life yeah but it's <sighs> I mean if someone offered me a contract tomorrow I'd take it I'd quit my job oh, I'd, yeah I'd go anywhere they needed me to wow. it's interesting that n there was no talk of like oh there could be some sort of 
different type of thing you could do with your ballet training, even if you weren't going to be in a professional ballet company that was strictly ballet, but like, I don't think I would have been open to the idea at that time. Now for sure. Now I will like do anything tangentially. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I can teach one day. I would love to teach adult beginners. Like anything I can do to be involved any way I can get my foot in the door. Yeah. I'm here. But back then I just, I took it so seriously and all I wanted was to be in a, classical company like a contemporary company would not have okay. done it for me man I kind of wish you would have just tried anyways and just seen what yeah. ha- would happen you know even I, if there was a way you could have like you know maybe still gone to school for something regular but like still just tried yeah. to it's like sad to me that you like completely stop because you just never know what different type of opportunity could have come up or something you know yeah but so then but it you was like it was like a breakup it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's it really, so sad. It was awful. And I had auditioned for summer programs like before, you know, when I was like a younger teen. Um, and I, I did some pretty serious auditions. I auditioned for the summer program at Juilliard. Wow. That audition was, I mean, I had no business being how, there. How, I walked like? out of the audition knowing there was no chance. There were a few summer programs I got into, okay. but we couldn't afford to send me to where they were. Oh, so, you know, that maybe could have changed hard. things too. Um, that, I mean, auditions, those auditions, those girls are so good. Yeah. And an audition is like a really fast class. You walk in, yeah. they tell you the combination and you're immediately expected to do it. Um, I'm strong at that at bar. I'm very weak at center at kind of, connecting it very quickly and putting it into practice so to have to really not even see it go from hearing it to understanding what those moves are going to be in your body and to do it is yeah I was not um I was not executing the moves correctly and there were a lot of people who were but you said you got into a couple of them I did I did so you were doing something right and I imagine like the more you audition the more you get for sure. Used to it, or you were like, okay, I need to learn how to do. Then you know, kind of, not that they're having you all do the same things, but like, you kind of learn, like, oh, these are things I need to work on because this is what kind of what they're expecting at auditions. Yeah, I imagine and I think you get better. A lot of the other girls were auditioning all over the place yeah, too. So for me, it was like, I was just in this world that I, I wasn't really yeah. a part of. Yeah, <laughs> like I was just, yeah, I wasn't on that level, okay. but I wanted to be. Dang, that's rough. So then when you like broke up with ballet, what did you get into anything else? Did you get into something else? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always had like a creative pursuit in my life. So for a while I traded in dancing for painting. Okay. I mean, there you'd be hard pressed to name like a craft I haven't done. Really? But I minored in painting in college. That was like the oh, biggest cool. replacement. And I majored in fashion design. Okay. So between the two of those, I was always, like, making something. Oh, very cool. And now my apartment is, like, a graveyard of hobbies. <laughs> I, I've candle made. I've pressed flowers. I can sew. I wow. had a phase where I was tie-dyeing and selling stuff. <laughs> like, I mean, that's cool. The other day, I, like, refinished a pair of leather boots, so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, you may not have been this versatile if you had only done ballet. There so that's something good. Yeah. <laughs> what was your major? Oh, wait, fashion design. Fashion design. Um, and then did you go to school out there, or where did you go? I went to University of Delaware. Okay. And then how did you end up coming to L.A.? Ah, uh, that's a good question. So I've always wanted to live in L.A. I came here for the first time when I was like maybe 13 and I came back when I was 16 and I just thought it was so cool and so glamorous and I've always hated cold weather. Yeah. Um, and I grew up 45 minutes outside New York. Uh, I was in the city all the time. I cut school and went to New York a few times in high school. <laughs> like it kind of, New York City didn't seem as big and intimidating to me as I think it does to people from anywhere yeah. else. So the idea of moving to New York was like, yeah, that's what everyone does yeah. so to me LA had that appeal of like well if everyone's gonna move to New York I'm gonna move to LA mm. like I want to do something different and brave um and I moved to New York after college and the plan was just to spend a year there and then go to LA and a year became five years and then wait spend a year where in New York oh in New York City. yeah 
in New York City. Okay. Like after graduation, I was like, all my friends are going. I'll go. I'll just live there for a year, have fun, get it out of my system. Okay. And then I ended up staying for five years. Oh, because you did you get a job there first and then yeah. move there? Okay. Yeah, I got a job first. Um, and what was your job? I had a job. I was like commuting from New Jersey for a little, and then okay. eventually moved. Uh, that point, I was like the office manager for a sock company. Socks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, but shortly after I moved into the city, eventually I quit that job and worked in anthropology, and I was there for a really long time. Oh, nice. I was in retail. Oh, cool. Okay. Until the pandemic. Yeah. Good. Some good styles for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I was in New York, and um, a good friend of mine had moved to LA. I came out here for her wedding, and I just was reminded of why I loved it. And I was like, I don't want to go back to New York. I want to stay here. So as soon as I did go back, I got all of my ducks in a row and moved when my lease was up. Wow. And did, had you found a job first or did you just come here? So I got very lucky. I, I had just gotten a promotion at my job. I worked for Warby Parker at the time in retail. And I came back and I said, I know I just got promoted and I just opened this new store. But do we have any plans to open any new stores in L.A.? Because I think I want to move to California. And... I can't believe it. My boss did not kill me. He was so nice. He actually was like, yeah, we're supposed to open in West Hollywood. Wow. And um, it just like all fell together so wow. perfectly. I had to move like a month earlier than I had planned to, but they promoted me. I got a raise. Wow. I got a relocation. That's amazing. And through all of this, were, did you have ballet or dance in the back of your head at all like or was it just that was completely out of your brain no I thought I was going to move here and take up surfing okay did you uh, I hate surfing it turns out I'm, I've never it tried. took me I'm a scared. really long time to admit it <laughs> finally after the last lesson I took I was like I'm just gonna say it 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 is what it is. I don't like this this isn't fun this is terrifying and I'm miserable I think it would have gotten fun if I got better but the level I was at, it was so scary. The whole time I was in the water, I was hating every second. Oh my gosh. So I just stopped trying to force that. Oh, I like to watch surfers, but I, I have too. no desire to actually and surf. And now my excuse is like, my feet are too valuable. I can't take any chances of that something happens to yeah. me out there. So you were out here for a while and it was all that you dreamed it would be. You loved it. Yeah. And then what, so what got you back into ballet? You know, that's a really good question, and I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I was in a relationship at the time, and part of me feels like, oh, every other aspect of my life was going well. Like, I was happy with my apartment. I was happy with my job. I had a good relationship, so it was the time to take up mm -hmm. hobbies. But then okay. the other half of me is like, I wasn't feeling fulfilled in my relationship. Okay. So maybe that's what drove me. <laughs> To take up hobbies, okay. I can't be certain which it is, but those were the circumstances surrounding it. And, um, you know, I said to my ex, like, I think I want to try ballet again. And he was like, you should. And, you know, I think the encouragement helped. I do think I, like, needed a little kick yeah. in the butt. And I came home from my first class, and I was, like, buzzing. I would not shut up. I was, like, on cloud nine. Where did you take it? I took it here. Oh, okay. I took it here. Um... And that was how many years ago? About two and a half. I think Miss Liz was probably the first teacher I took. Okay. And I stuck with Miss... I mean, I'm still with her. I stuck with her for a really long time. I stuck to, like, intro and beginner one for the longest time. And I don't know what got me to try beginner two and got me to show up on a Saturday. I remember thinking Saturday morning at 9 a.m. was, like, an insane time for a class. <laughs> like, to me, that was the crack of dawn. Um, and I like had to make such a, like an intentional effort to get myself there on time for 9am and I was hooked. I mean, Jason's energy, he's just the best and it's crazy. Like there was a time where I was like, how am I going to get myself to this class? And now I can't imagine missing it. Yeah. She is. I think you're even more consistent than I am. You're always there. Almost always. The amount of times I'm somewhere Friday night and it hits midnight, I'm like, gotta go. That's curfew. Gotta go if I'm going to make it a class tomorrow, <laughs> I'm leaving now. So what, tell me, what did, what was it about, it's Miss Liz, that's mm -hmm. what she goes by. What was it about her that, what did you like? I mean, obviously you already like ballet, so mm -hmm. maybe it would take a lot for you to not like the class, but yeah. what 
kind of kept you going to her class? Like, what about her teaching or the way she did it? I think she is the absolute perfect teacher for a beginner, especially like a brand new beginner. But, you know, I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of feelings around coming back to dance. Mm. And she is just so, like, gentle and kind. I say she's like a fairy godmother or something. <laughs> like, she's just, she's so sweet. She's so patient. She's so positive. Like, she just has a very lovely, encouraging demeanor. And it's really, I think, suited to mm -hmm. that that intro level class. And, you know, I showed up. I was like, oh, this is a level I can handle. I know all these words. I know more than some other people do. And then the muscle memory starts coming back. Um, I came back pretty quickly. Yeah. And then I started to also get you know, some compliments. So that helps. Yeah. Once you start getting the reinforcement, you're like, okay, well now I'm coming back. Yeah. That's um, so true. And I never planned on going on point. It was, I didn't think it was something you could do as an adult mm. if you didn't stay on point. It was not on my radar. It was never something I considered. And Miss Liz was like, you know, you could probably go back on point if you want to. Wow. I was like, I could what? <laughs> and she she thought I was ready way before I thought I was ready. She and that had was just to, in the like, beginning. Um, yeah. 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 She had to like really kind of keep putting that bug in my ear. And wow. finally I was like, okay, I feel ready. I feel strong enough to give it a shot. Um, and did she know like your story? Yeah. Yeah. At some point I had kind of explained, yeah. you know, why I'm an intro. Like yeah. I'm not a beginner, but I am she's a probably beginner. like, wait, this girl knows what she's doing. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I just didn't realize you had such a long break until only a couple years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, um, gosh, I'm bad at math. I want to say it was like a 16 year yeah. break. Like, of like completely nothing. Completely nothing. Did you even ever go see a dance show, see a ballet or anything? Um, I, I couldn't. I, was, I would have cried. I think maybe like... I saw the Nutcracker once right before I left New York when I had already decided I was moving to LA. I took a few classes at Joffrey. And then when I moved here, it's just like, I just like forgot. Do they have like drop in classes there? Yeah, they had oh, adult cool. beginner ones and they were okay, but they weren't like particularly fun. Okay. I find, I love Westside. Oh, yeah. I find we Westside love Westside. To be perfect for me. It is such an amazing place here because they really push you and grow you, but it's also like a really encouraging and like fun atmosphere. Yeah. And you build friendships really fast and. Yeah, I mean, all the teachers I've taken so far, I really like. Obviously, I mostly only go to Jason right now, but James and like, um, when other people have subbed, I love Sadie. I love Sadie. Um, what's her if last name? If anyone from again? West Side is watching this, give Sadie an evening class. Thank you. What is Sadie's Sadie last name? Black. Sadie Black. Yeah, she's great. She always has really good tips, and I always feel like I. We grow. gotta get you to David's Friday night class. I went once. I know. But I you live come in again. Pasadena, and, and I'm not going. Coming. I'm not going this week, so don't go this week because <laughs> I won't like, be there. Coming out here on a Friday night is the traffic is so bad. I know. Although, being honest, I'm gonna maybe be teaching a beginner jazz class on a Friday night, so I might be coming okay. out here. I'll come to that. <laughs> I totally want you to. Um, crazy. Okay, wait. I was gonna. Okay, so how do you? Oh, this is what I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about point shoes. Because I, so I started taking ballet maybe like five years ago, but definitely more now than I was back then because I do take a lot of different styles, as you know. Mm -hmm. So um, my old ballet teacher in Pasadena, Catherine Round, she's really awesome and she has a studio out there. Um, she used to always be like, whenever you want to get on point, Tracy, because she would like go with the students to find the point shoes oh, and help great. them. Like she's really awesome like that. But I just had no desire because ballet was never, like, my number one thing. I liked it, but I was like, I'm just doing this mostly to get the foundation so I can do my other dance mm -hmm. better. And it's not till like... That's a bummer because I I think you would do great at point. You have, you're you really strong. Aw. So you, I think you have the muscle foundation for it if well, it's something you wanted thanks, to try. Barry. I So basically that's that was my thoughts about it back then. Now I'm definitely more into ballet than I was back then. Like, I was only taking it, like, once a week. Now I'm up to, like... A lot of times it's three times a week, mm -hmm. a lot of weeks. But I still, I I just don't understand point shoes. I like how it looks. Like um, Barry took our beginner ballet class last week. Well, it's not really beginner. It's Chasen, so it's hard. It's not harder. It's hard. It's the hard class on Saturday morning. Um, she did the whole bar in point shoes I did. for the first time, right? That was your yeah, first time? Yeah, that was time? my first time. Um, you know, some people that, 
used to be at my level who have progressed have started doing it. And I know they're taking more classes than me and they're taking privates, but I kind of came to this realization, like, I got to push myself. The only, if I keep taking the same classes, I'm going to stay in the same place. Yeah. So eventually I'm going to have to try it. So why not today? Yeah. And I did. You, and she was in front of I'm me the whole do time. It again on Saturday. She did so good. Thank I was you. like, I told her I was shocked. She's like, you were shocked. <laughs> Like, that sounds like negative. I I was really just like I was really just like impressed because like not I was like anybody the first time they're doing point for like a whole bar section. I just I just don't even I just can't even fathom going on point. So it just looks so, so good to me. Thoughts. Like well, I didn't want to wear point class or point shoes for Chasen's class until I knew I would do a decent job because he's never seen me in point shoes okay. and so I didn't want to embarrass myself like yeah. I, not that I'm like trying to impress him he works with professionals I'm not going to be impressive comparatively but you know I wanted to be able to hold my own I yeah. didn't want to be trying too hard yeah, yeah, yeah so I wanted to make sure I was ready um what I think is impressive is it's like you kind of have to do certain moves differently because it kind of it's saw like learning you. to walk all over and again. I'm just like how does I mean obviously you've been taking point but I'm like how does Barry know like to do it like that in the point shoes because it's a little bit different Class. than in, when you're in regular ballet shoes. Yeah. So I was just impressed. I was like, dang, she's doing it. Like, you looked really good. <laughs> you. And that's the difference between point classes and regular classes. The secret that we're all keeping from you. Okay. All of us who are wearing point Tell shoes us. at the bar in, like, non-point classes, it is so much easier to wear point shoes for a regular class than to wear point shoes for a point class. Why? Because a point class, you are focused on point and point technique okay so the entire class you are up or okay. going up or going up and down okay um and you're doing it in a lot of challenging ways because that's exactly how you learn how the moves need to be modified for the point shoes whereas in a regular bar you're going up on releve for the most part not till the end until you balance okay. so you're actually staying flat in your point shoes most of is that kind of time. hard to be in point shoes flat though is it like it's weird not easy it's weird it's yeah it's, like a little like it's you're hard off not to pronate it it really feels like you're doing ballet with bricks on your feet yeah this is, it <laughs> it's fun. like trying to do what you've always done <laughs> and then there's like this added kind of obstacle yeah sounds fun. awesome <laughs> it I mean when I think about point it's like what am I doing why am I doing it the amount of times in the middle of class, after class, I thought, what am I doing this for? And then you learn a new skill and you get it. And it's like, that's what I'm yeah. doing it for. Like, I'm starting to work on turns on point. And when I get a pirouette, it will have made the year and a half, the past year and a half, all the pain, all the sweat, all the point shoes I've tried on and gone through. It'll all be worth it. Wow. Because, like, that will be so cool. I can't wait for that moment. Yeah. I said in December... By June, I'm going to be doing pirouettes. So nice. that's the goal. And okay. I can't wait. That's pretty close. I know. Um, did you... So, I mean, you obviously had experience with point when you were younger. Mm -hmm. Did Were you able to just go to... Did you go to a dance store to get your point shoes? Or how did that work? So we had a dance store that was, like, associated with our school. So our teacher had to first, like, give us the okay to go on point. We had to, like, be allowed into the class. And then she did This was fittings. when you were young? When I was young. Okay. When I was, like, 13. Okay. She did fittings at the store. Okay. So she would, you know, pick a day and go, and we'd all, like, schedule time with her. So she was the one fitting us. And it's not that I thought she did a bad job. I think she did as good of a job as she could. But, like I said, in hindsight, when I was having ankle problems, I right. do think they could have been fixed by a different shoe. Yeah. But maybe so, she didn't know that. Or maybe we didn't have access. Or maybe there's just more options now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So, like, what did you do this time around getting your point shoes? So, Dance Store and Robertson, for anyone who needs to get fitted it's for point shoes. It's called Dance Store. It's called The Dance Store. Oh, okay. So, the I would store. highly recommend The Dance Store. They are such sweet ladies that work there. are so patient. Where? Is it on the west side? It's... It's closer to Mid City. Okay. It's like on Robertson, kind of like Pico Robertson okay. area. Okay. Um, they're, they're open on Saturday. Like you could probably go there Saturday on your way home. Okay. If you wanted to. Yeah. Um, and they do fittings, they do appointment based. So went there, you just try on a lot of shoes and 
then you dance in them and you see what happens. The first one is really tricky because it's like almost always the first pair isn't really going to be fully right because you don't know. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't for. know what you're looking for. Yeah. So she said, how do these feel? And I said, I think good. And they ended up being like way too small for me. There was no world in which those were ever going to work. But I said they felt good. That's on me. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you wear a pair of shoes and then you think, okay, in the next pair of shoes, I would like it if they were more narrow here or if they were stronger here. You kind of bring that to your fitting. Yeah. And hopefully find a better shoe. And then... Once you find a shoe that works, you pray they don't stop making it and that your feet don't change too much because my heart goes out to all the girls who are wearing Russians. They don't make Russian points anymore. Oh. A whole bunch of my friends found like their sole shoe and now they've got to find another Dang. one. And now are point shoes generally, how much are they generally? Is it a wide so that's, range? or That's the other thing. It's like, I would love for you to try point, but it's it's a financial commitment. You, yeah. You in buying the shoes, you're committing to a certain amount of time. You want them to be used. They are typically between like 120 and 150 ish. Okay. There's some like new fancy technology on the market. You know, some of them are a little bit more expensive, but they're not made the traditional way. They're designed to last longer. But because generally, for me. if you're dancing like as many, if you're dancing like four, four or five times a week, like you are. And not, not, I guess you're not always on point, but yeah. like how often do you go through your point shoes? So the general rule of thumb that I've heard is around 16 hours per pair, give or take. Um, I think professionals go through. 16 hours? 16 hours. Total? Total. That's it. Mm -hmm. 16 hours. So you mm -hmm. could go through them in like a few weeks or something. I mean, professionals go through them in a show. They go through them in a single day. What? They, <laughs> That's way crazier than I thought it was. It also is like... The, the point shoes you're wearing, like, the stronger you are, like, the more you kind of are able to get away with dead shoes when you're a beginner. It, like, you really feel the difference and you need that support. So, yeah, they die. They die really quickly. What is, so, explain what is a dead shoe. Oh, man, I took my point shoes out of my bag, oh, too. That's Bummer. okay. That's okay. So, point shoes are designed to be supportive and hard. You know, you can, like, knock on them and they make that, like, kind of wood sound. Yeah. And it's... A lot of layers of like glue and sometimes paper and fabric and there's like this perfect balance in the middle where they're broken in so they mold to the shape of your foot and it feels comfortable and your foot doesn't feel completely squished and you feel supported when you go up on point but you know all that pressure eventually just weakens all of that so Usually, like, the arch will get really, really soft and you kind of your heel starts sinking and, you know, okay. you'll start to feel and see differences and you're not as pulled up and as supported and that's when it's time for new shoes. Wow. Or Jack Lou. So oh, okay. I know. You also have to, like, know how to, like, sew in things. It's just, yeah. like, a whole different beast where I'm, like... I don't know. Ballet isn't even necessarily my main style, but I do think it looks cool. And whenever I see people doing it, I'm like, oh my gosh, is I it like, it. is it just like a more, do you get a more exhilarating feeling being on point? Yes. Like how, do, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel so much taller than you well, are. You are like, right. You, you know, it's like, you're only four or five inches taller. You're like the, not even the inches, whole length though. of your foot. I do have a really big foot, but I swear it feels like stilts. It's like a whole different perspective on the room. You're just, it's You're like, like looking down on everyone. I just feel superior. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's like it. like I am a beautiful ballerina on these stilts and you are not. And look at how gorgeous I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. But it's, Love it. it's really crazy. Like even like ballet runs and ballet walks, like a ballet run is so much harder in point shoes and it looks so stupid. What is a ballet run? I just like running is. with your like, feet running. pointed and dainty. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Sounds... we had to practice ballet runs like two weeks ago and I wanted to leave class early. Wow. And it's like kind of the easiest move. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw you post something of yourself in point, I was just like, I watched it like six times. I was like, wow. <laughs> like and I was, very, I was so scared good. to do it. I mean, I'm not like, you know, I'm not an influencer. I'm not an anybody. But it was partially I was so, so, so proud. And partially like this is the best way for me to see my own process yeah. and to track my progress. Yeah. Not that like every video I take needs to be shared. But it has also been so fun. The response has been 
so positive from all of my family and friends and even like friends of friends, the amount of people who have said like, this inspired me to pick up another hobby or mm. it's so great seeing you do this or it makes me so happy that you, you know, ha have taken this journey. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really nice. I'm sure it inspires so many people because like a lot of people probably have similar experiences as you of like, oh, since I couldn't make it a career, I just, but I, it was like such a strong passion. I just gave it up completely or maybe they didn't give it up completely, but like I have friends who, you know, didn't make it a career and there is a sort of sadness they have, like maybe it's hard for them to watch performances and things mm -hmm. like that because it brings back like something they went through or um, strong emotions about it, even if they are dancing sometimes on the side. Cause it is hard if yeah. it's something you love so much, sometimes it is hard to just have it as a hobby, you know? Yeah. Even for me, it's like, I don't necessarily have a strong dream of like getting professional dance gigs, although I'm not going to turn one down, you know, unless Same. there's like some <laughs> strong reason I want to turn that one down. But um, but the thought of only doing it once in a while or something, I'd be like, well, why would I do that? I need to do it like every day. I need to get, yeah. you know, I need to like, I just take it so seriously, even though I'm like, I don't even know why. <laughs> but it's it crazy so how seriously. that happens too. Like, you know, when I was away from dance, part of what I told myself was like, LA is so big. There's so much traffic. Even if I find a class, I won't be able to get there from work. Like I have too much going on. I'm too busy, too much social life, whatever. So the first class I started taking was like, what, it was a weeknight. I don't know. It was a night that, you know, I can commit to like this night always being available. And as I fell back in love, it just becomes more and more important and your priorities shift. You know, I used to be someone who would go out drinking on Friday and now it's like, I'd rather stay in Friday or do something calm so I can make it to Saturday class. Mm -hmm. I can still go out drinking Saturday night if I want, but like, my priority is no longer socializing on a Friday. It's taking care of my body so I can get to class Saturday because that's what matters to me now. Well, and you take class on Friday too, but I guess yeah. you could do something after. So I started taking class on Friday because I was already like staying in Friday nights <laughs> You're like, for what else Saturday am I doing? morning. So I was like, well, if I'm already staying home for ballet, I might as well take ballet for ballet. <laughs> I love that. That's the logic. Um, okay, not to like get backtrack, but Do it. can you tell me more about point shoot? Okay, yeah. we have a few more minutes till we have to go actually to our ballet class, but and then we're gonna talk after it. But um, we may need to do like a second session. I feel like I have so much more to say. <laughs> we didn't touch half the questions. So many people say that, but yeah, we might have to do that down Part the road. Two. <laughs> but um, okay, inside, I do kind of wish you had your point shoot here. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Inside the point shoe, most people are listening anyway, so it's fine. Um, they just try to be really descriptive. So inside the point shoe, what is in there? It was a little box. I literally don't okay. know. <laughs> what don't isn't know. in there is the question. So the, <laughs> the like tip of the point shoe, the toe part is called a box. Okay. So the whole thing is the box. Okay. And it's very hard. So it's like layers of satin on the outside and glue and like cotton, stiff cotton canvas. I don't know how many layers. And then the shank what's the shank where is the that? shank is like the arch so that oh, would be kind of arch. like the sole of the point shoe is the shank okay and there's also like little nails in there i don't know why oh my gosh okay. but occasionally if you're like watching crazy videos like prep my point shoes with me you might see girls separate the inside and then take those little nails out and then they break part of the shank but that's every for like extreme advanced okay Everybody kind of seems to like like their point shoes different ways. I'm sure like you just figure out what you like once you're trying. Yeah, it. it's a lot of it's all trial and error. And there's so many there's so many products now. You know, not to sound like when I, but when I was a kid, there was a few different toe pad options. You know, when my teachers were kids, they were putting newspaper in their shoes. You hear all these horror stories of teachers that wouldn't let you use padding or wouldn't let you use anything but newspapers or paper towels. And I'm very glad we have. So much technology, so many options. Um, anyone who tells you not to use toe pads is not your friend. They don't have your best interests in mind. Like if that's what it takes for you to feel good in your shoes, use the toe pads. Um, so I, I saw you with those. Those are like the pink do, things. I do like lamb's wool around my big toe and then a gel cover over all of my okay. toes. But there's, they make like little dots of kind of like plasticky stuff that you can use if there's areas you get blisters some people use toe separators they have kits to make custom toe pads 
Some wow. people like to have wiggle room in their shoes and don't like to use a lot of padding because they like to feel the floor. Okay. I'm the exact opposite. I don't want to feel the floor. I know it's there. I don't want to feel anything. Um, so it's like you also don't want to be sliding around in your shoes yeah. because then you'll get blisters. But if they're too snug, then you'll get blisters from them. Do you Have you gotten like – I guess you kind of got hurt or you your ankle had issues because of maybe not the best point shoes back then. Do, do people get hurt more because of point shoes or hurt their feet more? Like, I feel like that's the horror story in my head is like, oh, if I were to ever try point, it's like going to be a riskier thing for my feet. I'm going to mess up my feet. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it happened. It hasn't happened to anyone that I know. Okay. It hasn't happened to any of the adults that I know here. Okay. Um, I think the thing is to also remember, like, you're not going to put on point shoes and then go do a triple pirouette yeah. or like PK turns across the floor, you're going to take a bar class, you know, for the first probably nine months, I didn't leave the bar. Yeah. So how hurt can I get when yeah. there's something there for me right. to grab onto? It's like, it's calculated risk. It's yeah. knowing what risk you're comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. Like there is a chance when I start practicing pirouettes, I'll twist my ankle and it'll all be over for me, but... Okay, Let's we'll hope not. That. You know, I've been <laughs> I've been working on my strength. I've been practicing regular pirouettes. I've been practicing. You know, that's why you yeah. you train so that by the time yeah. you try it, hopefully it goes off. Well, you're doing really good. I'm I'm gonna pray that there's like some cool dance opportunities that come your way. Like Thank I think you. the adult showcase is already like a really cool opportunity. I love the showcase. But still, I'm gonna pray that like even more cool things yeah. that somehow like your long break would be like redeemed with like some cool opportunities, so, you know? I have this like crazy dream slash plan. I'm 36 right now. I've been training for about two years again. So if I train till I'm like 56, yeah, that will be 22 years. Like yeah. maybe someone will put me in their company as a novelty. Like, oh look, the old lady. Like I'm not above being the token, like tokenize me, whatever, <laughs> but. I don't know. I think typically in ballet, there wasn't room for older dancers and being around West Side, seeing so many incredibly strong older dancers. I think that's yeah. something we're going to see yeah. change. And I think we're going to see more performance opportunities for not just older dancers, but also different abilities, yeah. different bodies. Yeah. And we'll see I what love happens. That. That's yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's going to need to be 20 years. I instead think... of retiring, I want a contract. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Well, we are going to take a pause, go take our class. And then afterwards, we're going to talk a little bit about how our class went tonight. So we'll talk to you then. Wish us luck. Bye. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. We're back with my guest, Barry, ballet dancer, Barry. Ballet Barry. Oh, it's great <laughs> that you have that alliteration, actually. Yeah, I'm into it. My um, bat mitzvah theme was ballet, so it was... Barry's Ballet Bat Mitzvah. Oh my gosh, that's really cute. Love Thank that. <laughs> um, so we just took Chase and Greenwood's Intermediate Slash Advanced Advanced. Class. Advanced. Advanced class. We'll call it. Wait. Is it only called Advanced now? Oh, okay. No, but it should be. <laughs> okay. It's, I thought it was called Harder. Hard and Harder. Yes. Our Chase and classes. On my scale, it's Harder. <laughs> it's the Harder one. On Wednesday nights, he has it. And Barry hasn't been back to Wednesday night for a while. I would say... Uh, least six months I think wait really yeah I was consistently going over the summer and then I started my new job towards the end of September and that's pretty much when I stopped going to Wednesday class because oh, wow. I was like I can't go to downtown and Santa Monica in one day like that's yeah too much LA okay that makes sense <laughs> and yet here we are <laughs> here we are though um so what did you think about it coming you back know, I really was like hyping it up in my head it was not nearly as bad as I was hyping it up. It wasn't as hard even as I remember. Oh, that good. being said, there was stuff I had to sit out of. So it's like, who am I to say it wasn't that hard? But, um, and you had to sit you know, out because I have some knee injuries. I have like jumper's knee, which just means my knees get really swollen really easily. Um, so I just can't do a ton of jumping because I'm trying to really like get that under control. Under control before she starts doing like rehearsals five times a week or whatever it is. Ballet so I had to skip week. all of the jumping combinations, which are like the most fun. I but literally was like, well, "What happened to Barry? Where did she go?" <laughs> like, sitting oh, in the injured corner. There. It was very cool to watch 
so many of my friends do it though. Aww. Like because I sat it out, I just got to watch everyone. And it is really awesome to see how many of my friends have gotten so much stronger since the last time I took this class. Wow. So it was still fun for me, even though I couldn't participate. That's so nice though. It's, it is nice to watch your friends grow and it's nice when um, my friend Sarah, do you know Sarah Chan? I think that's her last name. Um, she's a really good. I'm and, sure I would know her face um, if I saw her, but I don't know if I've met her. She was like, when I was coming off one of the center combos, she was like, oh, your shunnies are looking really tight. And I was like, really? <laughs> I mean, I, I do terrible shunnies generally when I'm trying to go fast. Mm -hmm. So um, I do want to get them better. So it was nice that she like noticed something because she sees me dance a lot. Yeah. So I'm sure it was just like better for me. But <laughs> I, it's nice to see your friends and yeah, see the growth and see specific things. Yeah, I feel like we don't see it in ourselves and it's so much easier to see it in other people. So whenever I see like a peer or a friend, have a visible improvement yeah I do try to make it a point and like go over and say it and be specific whenever I can because we never see improvement yeah. in ourselves we never think we're getting better and sometimes it does take that other person to be like oh your arabesque was beautiful and they're like oh was it? I've yeah. been working on that so it's really nice I sometimes I have to tell myself okay look at Haley look at Adrian look at these people you know and like see how they're doing so you can yeah, so you can tell them, like, give them a compliment on something that you saw that was good. Because sometimes I'm just focused on, like, I just want to know the combo. So I'm just looking at the best person in class to, like, make sure I know it for when I go. Which sometimes you just have to do that. Yeah. But the times you don't have to do that because you kind of get it a little bit more, it's a really good time to look at other people you know and kind of see how they're doing. Or maybe even if it's someone you don't know and you just notice mm -hmm. something good, you can make a friend that way by, yeah. like, connecting with them about that. But yeah, I, that's funny that you thought it seemed easier than it was a long time ago. I bet it's because you've gotten a lot better. So probably it just seemed easier in perspective to like how you're doing now. Because I, guess so. I thought you were going to be like, oh, wow. Because just because he was going so fast, it wasn't like it was like the moves he was doing were like super hard at bar or anything. It's just like he was just like cranking it out. That was like a James style bar. James really? is notorious for being like, Keep the music going. Do it one more time. Turn around. Do it again. So I think also like the fact that I do take his Sunday classes and I usually can't wake up for the beginner. So I usually take his intermediate. I'm yeah. kind of used to being thrown those curveballs yeah. at the bar. Like, keep going. Now do it again with Daddy Chase. Now do it again okay. faster. I didn't like, know I don't he did that. love it, but... And that's James Addy, James who Addy. teaches on Sundays. He teaches a beginner and an intermediate. His intermediate is pretty hard. I've taken it once or twice. The bar especially. Like, yeah. I used to think like, oh, bar is like whatever. How hard could it be? And James showed me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I enjoyed Jason's class tonight. I think I I, even though the fast pace is, feels a little crazy and you get sweaty a lot faster and you're just like, ah. But it, I, I think it keeps it upbeat, keeps it going because I... I mean, Barry probably never gets bored in ballet because it's her absolute first love. But, like, I will get bored in ballet if it's not, like, moving fast enough. I don't like to That's move so too slow. That's so interesting. Yeah. Because, like, how are you bored when there's so many things to think about? If you're bored, you're not, you're not doing it right. It's not, like, bored. It's not bored like it's easy. It's never easy. Yeah. I, I will be challenged and bored at the same time. I'll be challenged, but I'll be, like... Can we go faster? I just like to move faster. Yeah, I think that's I all don't. it is, really. I like, I like the details of ballet. I like okay. the technique. Yeah. I like the perfection. Like, I feel like I'm in my head so much that ballet is one of the few places where I'm not thinking about the things that are going on. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, am I turned out? Are my ankles pronating? Are my knees supported? Am I holding my abs? Like, there's just so many body parts to think about and technique yeah. things to think about. That I think that's why it really works for yeah. me. Well, I need that. I do need it slow sometimes to think about that stuff, but I will get a little bit bored. I liked how Jason was pointing out in the pirouettes to really think about like your inner thigh. Yeah. I I really struggle with keeping my pirouette turned out because I'm such a jazz girl and I'm like I do too. <laughs> and I didn't think I did until I saw it on video. So it's like this is why it's important. Your video. I was like, that's what my turns look like. That's the other thing. Barry, 
Fortunately, Barry appreciates the videos I sneak in ballet class. I don't know how sneaky they are. I mean, it's pretty obvious I'm taking videos, but I try to be a little sneaky about it. But Barry, Barry likes to get in them. I like, I mean, I, <laughs> I love attention. I just want to do ballet. If people want to watch, go for it. Um, I especially think it's funny, though, because sometimes they're like a really weird angle, like straight just of my butt. And again, like, I'm not shy. I'll post that to my Instagram. I don't care. But like, should I be charging people for that? Is there a market for a fully clothed ballerina only fans? I don't know. If anyone out there knows. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm really sorry about that. No, it's, it's funny. I don't even think about it. And then you make your your then you repost it and you put your comment I'm like oh yeah I guess that is like straight on Barry's butt you're welcome viewers but I mean I thought we looked great I thought yeah, both of our butts looked great <laughs> um yeah so anyway I'm glad that we usually stand in the same section so I'm glad Barry doesn't care that I'm always like taking videos and literally I'm like putting them in the way of like her foot where she's kicking too sometimes <laughs> well and she's like my foot should my foot's in your phone's way no I think I think my phone was definitely in your foot's way but it's hard um to say. So anyway, any ballet dancers out there, anyone who wants to start taking ballet, try it at Westside. Try an intro class if you've never taken it before. If you have taken it before, we really like Chasen's classes, James' classes, David Protus. I don't know how to say his last name. Protus. Miss. Miss Liz is Ms. great. Liz. If you are like an absolute beginner, never taken a day in your life, her intro, that's yeah. the place to be. Hearing really good things about her. So, And Sadie, who doesn't have a regular oh. class. Does she you? has regular classes, but they're on the weekdays during the work day. Oh, so okay, okay. So I if you're wish I could go. You're available. But Technically, I but like I don't... Technically, but I don't... 8.45 or like 9. Like, why would you wake up on a day you don't have to work? Yeah, it's just like over here. Mm -hmm. And like, I am working. I'm just working for things that aren't giving me money right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remind myself that I have stuff to do, like besides go to dance class. <laughs> God, I'm like, I have to remind myself that dance class costs money. <laughs> Like every once in a while, I do think about how much I spend a week and then I'm like, no, I can't think about it. But the weeks that I take, it's the weeks I start to take more than four classes that I start to think about it, like a fifth and a sixth. I'm like, can, can I really justify this? Like, that's a lot of money. Yes, you That's can. like a pair of point shoes. You can. It's your passion. And I think if you, if it fits, if you can make it work and you're not like going into credit card debt. Then I'm I think not. it's great. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's your passion. I put my money where yeah. and the th where the things are that I care about. I think For like sure. I don't spend money on some other things because I spend so much money on dance class. But that's just yeah. But it's what we not love. um the cheapest sport out there to no. get into. But it is the prettiest. I was gonna say. <laughs> I was gonna say it's not like but you don't need all this equipment like you do for like skiing or something. But then I'm like, oh, what you do if you're doing point. If you <laughs> Otherwise, you can kind of, at Westside, you can kind of like wear whatever you want. So, yeah. That's um, true. Anyway, okay, we're going to wrap it up because we need to like go to bed and stuff. But uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for hearing Barry's story. And if you have any questions or comments about anything we talked about, write it in the comments. Um, hit us up on IG. And yeah, come we'll dance with us. You. Yeah, come dance with us. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>